how do you feel? No child left behind. I was kind of interested in that. I do think the law should be repealed, be, and not because I think that um, you know it's an issue of local control. I think it's because I don't think we should be treating our children like little little robots to be trained for factory or to be trained for you know work jobs. I think the idea of education is to release the creativity of our children, to give them the tools they need to live fulfilling lives, uh, to make sure they learn that which they should learn. And I, I would put civics back in our, in our education system. I think people need to learn about the Constitution and not just the Second Amendment. So uh, I really think that schools should be a place where children go to to learn and um, are nurtured. You, you would favor overturning the law. Yeah. Who would you replace it with? I think I would do a more teacher focused, you know, where the where the the ideas. There's many many great education ideas, you know, that that are the way we could help every child learn, leave no child behind. It isn't by teaching to the test, it's by, by making sure that that little kid over there that's not learning in the way the material's being presented, let's make sure that that child is presented the material in a way that they can understand, so they can also master it, so that they can all learn what they need to learn. There's a lot of good ideas out there. You brought up your desire to see more Renewable energy is coal. Coal's right. been a big part of this region. There's a lot of people who are still hanging on to it. How would you? Uh, how do you think you could get people to kind of move towards more renewable energy and learn to let go of coal? That's why I'm running for Congress. I think it has to be a federal uh, policy. And I think I actually come from a family of coal miners, and um, they didn't really like mining coal. What they liked was the money. And I and all the coal miners I've ever met in Southern Illinois, it wasn't that they thought the coal mining was such a fun job. Sometimes it was scary. And I mean, sometimes you know it's cold down there. You're a mile underground. Um, you can have a cave in. It's just uh, many people do not like the job, but they like the money. All you have to do is provide jobs with good wages, and people will be more than happy to give up coal mining, I'm pretty sure. You talked about the dangers of coal in relation to greenhouse gas emissions. Exactly. That's, that's the key thing. Uh, many economists say the only way really to deal with this is put a price of carbon, along with uh, that are also yoked to global treaties. How do you uh, favor something such as cap and trade? Or no. price and carbon, how would you do that? I would tax and dividend. I would absolutely not um, cap and trade. They've been doing that in the rest of the world for over 10 years now, and all it does in, is has increased pollution because they play the games, you know, they manipulate it. They say they're going to build a coal plant that they weren't going to build, and then they don't build it so they get credit so they can pollute elsewhere. It just, you can't have Wall Street in charge of our environment. I would tax carbon and then distribute the dividends equally among all Americans, like James Hansen says. And that way you would reward the people that don't use fossil fuels as much. You would put an actual price for people that do use it that they would have to pay the full cost, because after all, they a lot of these costs are externalized. The asthma, the, the floods, the wildfires, those aren't paid for by, by the coal companies or the fossil fuel companies, those are paid for by citizens of the United States. So I say put a tax on carbon and then pass out that tax to the citizens of the United States. How about uh, also investing in renewable energy? That's one Well, part. that would give you a big incentive, mm -hmm. wouldn't it? Yeah, you know? So you would be favor that too, whatever. Absolutely. And the federal government literally, not just tax credits, not just the kind of things they've been doing, low interest loans, actually buying solar panels and putting them up, and that would help those companies that are making the solar panels, and you'd have people, you'd have businesses springing up all over the place. Even now, with the pitiful, uh, the pitiful ways we're supporting it now, wind power has gone from one percent to four percent. You know, people will do the right thing if there's an economic reason to do it. But in terms of the Affordable Care Act, you you're opposed to it. I am. Uh, and, but you want to see something put in place that, that resembles Medicare, except for all Americans. Right. Uh -huh. it, the insurance companies, they have anywhere from 20 to 40 percent overhead. You know, the money that goes to the insurance companies is siphoned off in CEO salaries and big, you know, have you ever gone to a city? The biggest buildings there, the most beautiful buildings there are insurance company buildings. Where do you think they got that money? 
you know, uh, they, they really take an overhead. So, so Obamacare, their big bragging point besides, oh, our kids can stay on until they're 26, number one, why are those kids unemployed? Number two, if you had Medicare for all, those kids would be covered well past the age of 26. But the big bragging point is, oh, we're going to hold their overhead down to 20%. Medicare is 4%. Why would you take tax money and give it to private insurance companies and say, oh, well, they can only, they can only siphon off 20% when we already have a, an entire system in place that only uses 4%. Where do we get the money to support such a massive expansion of Medicare? The, the current Medicare system is forecast to go bust somewhere, I think, in the next 15 years. Um, so what, how, where do we get the funding? Well, I actually agree with Mr. Inyart that we need to have a progressive tax system in this country. I think we should put a tax on financial speculation. And don't forget all the money we'd save by the money that we now give to private insurance companies. That's billions and billions and billions of wasted dollars. If you want to spend that on health care, spend it on a uh, single-payer system and you could actually save money if you did that way. If you took all the money that we spend on insurance now and turn it over to a private, you know, I mean, to a public system. Maybe one more question and then we need to wrap up. Okay. Uh, the, um, uh, often people go for the Republican or the Democrat. You're obviously coming in apart from that. You're a Green Party candidate. Mm -hmm. Just talk about a little bit of uh, why people should break tradition and try something different. Well, I think that the two, the Democrat and the Republicans, are both, you know, right wings of the same bird. You know, the Green Party clearly offers something totally different than either one of those two parties, but really differ only on uh, or things around the edges. We're offering something much, much different. And so I think people should vote Green. And there's a lot of people who aren't Democrat or Republican who refuse to par participate in the entire thing because they say it's all a farce. I'm going for those people because that's over 50% of the voters. Okay. Thank you.